Livin' on an Air. Prince Harry sings with John Bon Jovi at Abbey Road on new charity single for Invictus Games, before recreating the Beatles' iconic album cover. Prince Harry today performed a duet with John Bon Jovi at Abbey Road Studios for a new charity single, before recreating the Beatles' iconic zebra crossing photo outside. A teaser video shared by the Sussex Royal Instagram page showed Harry at the mic with Bon Jovi as they recorded the single Unbroken for the Prince's Invictus Games Foundation, but cut out before he started singing. Bon Jovi praised the Prince afterwards, saying, he was great. He knew the song and then he heard it a couple of times and we got to catch up. The star was asked about when he sang on stage with Prince William and Taylor Swift and who was better, William or Harry? He smiled diplomatically and said, they both have a set of pipes they really do. Harry later joined the Livin' on a Prayer star and members of the Invictus Games Choir to pose for a photo on Abbey Road's famous zebra crossing, which appeared on the front of the Beatles' 1969 album. Every year, the crossing, which has grade 2 listed status, draws thousands of music fans who, just like the Duke, recreate the picture taken by Ian McMillan of the Fab Four. First to cross was wheelchair user and former serviceman Andy Mudd, followed by the Bon Jovi frontman, Susan Warner and finally Harry, who took the same position George Harrison occupied in the 1969 snap. With dozens of press and public watching, the force opposed as freezing rain fell and the traffic was halted by police. It came as tourists watching the changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace were treated to a series of Bon Jovi hits including Living on a Prayer and It's My Life. Harry returned to the UK from Canada this week to begin a series of royal engagements which are likely to be his last before he steps down from royal duties on March 31st. After telling delegates attending a sustainable tourism conference on Wednesday to just call him Harry, the royal was equally relaxed around the rocker who had a string of hits with his band Bon Jovi in the 1980s. The two men greeted each other warmly on the steps of the world-famous studio, where the Beatles recorded a string of iconic albums, with dozens of photographers, journalists and cameramen capturing the moment. The prince and the pop star were ushered inside to the control room overlooking Studio 2, where the Beatles recorded during the 1960s. Engineer Robbie O'Brien, John's long-term friend and producer, was waiting to talk the prince through the process of re-recording the 2019 Bon Jovi single Unbroken with the Invictus Games Choir. The single is an aid of the Invictus Games Foundation which oversees the development of the Invictus Games, the international multi-sport event for injured or sick military personnel founded by Harry. Unbroken was created by John Bon Jovi to shine a spotlight on veterans living with post-traumatic stress disorder PTSD, and honor their service. The musician has a close affinity with the military as both his parents served in the U.S. Marine Corps. Crowds outside Buckingham Palace were treated to a medley of Bon Jovi songs during the changing of the guard ceremony. Harry and the rock star had a private meeting and while in the studios recorded a video which was later posted on Harry's official Instagram account. The pair were seen in a recording booth with headphones on and Bon Jovi had a guitar. Just before they sang into a microphone the footage ended. The Duke later joked with an engineer, we've been gargling next door, so we're ready to go. Harry was also reunited with Michelle Turner, whose daughter Maya, now nine stole the show at the Toronto Games in 2017 when she read out a letter she had written thanking him for helping her mother. RAF Sergeant Michelle, from Wigan, has a serious heart condition which causes her to collapse, but she competed in the swimming and rowing in Toronto and is now an ambassador for the foundation. She said of seeing Harry again, straight away he came to me and asked, how's Malia? Invictus Games is his. He created it and the difference that he's made to so many people through this, we are so grateful. The fact that he remembers our names, our children, the fact that he is genuinely interested in how the Team UK training is going, how the choir sang yesterday, how did they feel? In the morning they were petrified. They just wanted to be in the military, they didn't expect to be at Abbey Road Studios with John Bon Jovi. Michelle, added. They saw me two years ago a broken mess and now they see me helping others. If you help others you get so much yourself. 
And that's what Prince Harry says to us. Bottle this, what you've been given, this opportunity of being in Team UK or being in the Invictus Games Choir, bottle it and take it to your friends and families and where you live and spread that message that life doesn't go to plan but you can carry on and do whatever you want. She said he didn't talk about his family, adding, he just said keep on going, we said thank you and we're honored that he's going to continue to be the patron of Invictus Games. You see that when he comes into the room, he has that camaraderie with the guys. Genuine hugs. He walks into a room of veterans and feels at home. We are so grateful to him and maybe he's grateful to us. It's all part of being a team, camaraderie and being with like-minded people again. That's what it's all about, whether you are singing or on the sports pitch. David Wiseman, former UK team captain, said of Harry, he's always on great form when he's with the veterans. That's no secret. He had an amazing time in the British Army, he always said he could be just Harry when he was in the Army and I think he just defaults back into that setting when he's with the veterans. Of course, we will miss him, Dash but he will be back. He's given his firm commitment to his veterans programs and interests. He's just over the water. He said of the visit to Abbey Road Studios, it's iconic, it's amazing, it's a once in a lifetime for most of us. The Invictus Choir have been the focus of today and as a former Invictus sportsman, it's great. For a while the focus has been the games and the sport whereas today was their day. Not everyone is really into sport but that doesn't mean that people shouldn't come together after injury and find another avenue to come together and create something amazing. Andy Mudd, who appeared in the zebra crossing photograph, said, It's a pinch yourself moment. We're in the best studios in the world. Abbey Road Studios. Singing into those iconic microphones used by the Beatles. Andy, who found out he was going to be in the crossing picture 20 minutes beforehand, said, There was me with no legs, thinking how am I going to get my left foot forward and my right foot forward. It's iconic. I'm 63 years old. I've seen pictures on the album. It's another part of the experience. The choir. The group that we've got and help for heroes has been amazing to get us all together. Crossing with Prince Harry and Bon Jovi. I was leading them over with a t-shirt on looking daft in this weather. Andy, from York, added, This song is about the mental fight that you've got to get back. We are not broken, we are unbroken. It's important that we've got to gold to go from. That song made me think about lying in hospital, realizing I'm in serious trouble. From there you build yourself up. You've got your physical and mental therapy and it gets you back onto your feet. What he's, Harry, trying to get at is that in general the civilian population might think that we're all damaged because of combat. But underneath all this we are normal people. I'm a normal person, just shorter than I was. It's a case of getting on with your life and living with your injuries. Former Ruff Regiment parachutist Gary Peake, 58, said, this foundation helps us to function, in all walks of life, to prove we have an ability and something to give. We are a family. This choir has given me employment. I struggled to find work for four years, but now I'm teaching mental health first aid to big companies. The more we talk, the more it releases those demons. It's a dream come true from where we've come to where we are now. Gavin Lewis said he had been homeless four years ago after his marriage broke down as he struggled with PTSD 30 years after serving in Northern Ireland with the Royal Regiment of Wales. Describing how he found out about the choir after a chance meeting with another veteran supported by Help for Heroes, he said, This choir has changed my life. There are thousands of us, there are loads of X Forces people still living with this silent killer. But we're saying it's okay not to be okay. There are people out there to help. He said of meeting Harry, it was surreal, we've seen his face on the TV. Because he's an ex-soldier, he's one of us. He put us really at ease. Invictus Games choir manager Carolyn Rawlings said, it's just been an amazing opportunity to galvanize the guys, a great thing to look forward to. They are so keen to share in the Invictus experience and what that means in improving outcomes for other sick and injured people. And the opportunity to work with John Bon Jovi is just outrageously awesome.
This week the Duke of Sussex embarked on his final round of engagements as a senior working royal as he launched a new eco-friendly travel firm in Edinburgh, and asked delegates just to call him Harry. Prince Harry, who will step down as a senior royal in less than five weeks, was in the Scottish capital for a working summit of the Travelist Partnership, which will feature a grading system for users to track their carbon emissions. Before he took to the stage, host Aisha Hazarika, a former Labour adviser, said, he's made it clear that we are all just to call him Harry. So ladies and gentlemen, please give a big, warm, Scottish welcome to Harry. Harry flew to Britain from Canada on a commercial flight earlier this week and arrived in Edinburgh on an eco-friendly Ulner train from London King's Cross station last night, with taxpayer-funded Scotland Yard bodyguards. The 35-year-old Duke, who is officially known as the Earl of Dumbarton when in Scotland, has been stung by criticism over the past six months of his frequent use of private jets while campaigning on environmental issues. Harry's flight to Britain this week was believed to have been the seventh flight that Queen's grandson has taken so far this year, following return trips from Vancouver Island to London, Miami in Florida and Palo Alto in California. His arrival comes amid an angry backlash today as Harry and Meghan's pound 20 million security bill looks set to fall squarely on British taxpayers after Canada refused to keep paying. Canadian police confirmed last night it would stop assisting with security for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex when they step down as working royals and become private citizens after Megxit on March 31. This means the cost of round-the-clock protection for the couple and baby Archie will fall solely to the taxpayer-funded Metropolitan Police, despite the couple leaving the UK for North America. The force, which currently protects the couple at home and abroad today refused to comment on whether they would continue to do so after Megxit. Buckingham Palace declined to say if Harry and Meghan would contribute any of their own money for their protection. Royal expert Phil Dampier today said the couple should not receive public money for security when they become private citizens with their own income, which is said to be millions of pounds a year. It was only a matter of time before the Canadians stopped paying for their security because they're no longer working royals and now obviously the burden will fall on British taxpayers, he told Mail Online. It is the first time Canada has confirmed it has been helping to guard Harry and Meghan since they settled on Vancouver Island last November. But last night it announced this would cease from April in keeping with their change in status. Canada has a legal obligation to provide security to so-called internationally protected persons. The Sussexes arrived there on a temporary visit in November as full working royals, and the Mounties gave them protection as they always have on such visits, with Canadian taxpayers picking up the bill. But now Harry and Meghan intend to live in North America to pursue lucrative commercial careers and will quit as senior working royals on March 31.